It's Sunday, November 29th, and today I want to talk about vaccines. And I've spent talking about COVID-19 for the past couple of days. But today I want to talk about the vaccines and the vaccine makers, and in particular, AstraZeneca and the Oxford University vaccine. Now, we've got people in this country who have been hearing about Operation Warp Speed and uh, how fast we were going to produce a vaccine. And we did. Moderna and Pfizer have come through. And they have produced the vaccines that may not be ready for everybody until early next year. But they're saying they can start giving vaccines to health professionals and people on the front lines and maybe the vulnerable population late this year or early next year. And that's great. And then along comes AstraZeneca and they tell people that they have a va their vaccine is... Uh, is almost ready, and they give some numbers, some promising numbers. And then it turns out that their testing procedures were not up to snuff. Scientists have raised doubts about the robustness of the results showing that the shot was 90% effective in a subgroup of trial participants who, by error, initially received half a dose, followed by a full dose. So right now, all they have is limited data on what the results really were. And then AstraZeneca came out and said that in certain cases in Brit Britain and in Brazil, only 70% of the uh, vaccine cases really worked well. And while the success rate was 90% in that group that only took half a shot and a full shot, then when they looked at some other information, the effective rate was only 62% if the full dose was given twice. And that's the way it was given to most participants. So you got three different sets of numbers that the world is struggling with. And basically the whole situation has put a kibosh on AstraZeneca's attempt at this vaccine. Because everybody is looking for a 90% efficacy rate. And so if you get a 90% in a subgroup that was treated differently than lower numbers in other groups, you have cast a cloud over your vaccine. And that's what AstraZeneca has done. They have cast a cloud over their vaccine. And the number of participants in this subgroup was very small, only 2,741 people. And none of those people was over the age of 55. So that's another black mark against this test. Because if it didn't include any of the vulnerable universe, how good could the test really be? How good could the results really be? Whereas in the cases of Moderna and Pfizer, their subgroups were 30,000 people. And they included people from the vulnerable groups. So when you get results based upon 2,700 people, that's not really enough to go out to market with, especially when you've got contradictory results in other groups. So as they say in the uh, professional vernacular, the devil is in the details, right? Now, this is a terrible thing to hear because there is a population that was already afraid to take this vaccination. We had people talking about not taking the vaccine because they weren't sure that all the testing was done properly. And they were afraid. And of course, the actions of our leadership weren't the greatest in the world. So on top of that, we now have a major drug company that has screwed up and thrown doubt on the entire process. So when it appears that AstraZeneca was cherry-picking the results 
and selectively picking out the data that looked favorable to them, that throws an entire blanket of doubt across the entire vaccine manufacturing world. What if these other companies did something like that? I don't think they did. I think that Moderna and Pfizer are on the up and up. And I don't think that AstraZeneca really purposely attempted to do this screw-up. This is a monumental screw-up. People should be fired for it. But I don't think it was intentional in any way, shape, or form. Because that would really, really be a horror story. Now, given that we know that a huge percentage of our population doesn't want to take the vaccine. They're afraid of taking a vaccine for many different reasons. Most of them pretty stupid reasons. But when you see this happening and you've got a population that is on tenterhooks, as they say, you can't afford to have a screw up like this which will drive people away from taking the vaccination. We've got a nervous group of people out there in the world, and we just have thrown a tremendous amount of doubt in their minds. And so they are not going to readily run up there and get a vaccination. They are going to hesitate, and that is disaster. So you think about this. This is a monumental, major mistake for a from a supposedly world-class organization. And it's just the thing that the naysayers are looking for to encourage people that the COVID-19 pandemic is a hoax and we shouldn't be taking vaccination. And so I leave you with the thoughts about what you're going to do. I'm taking a vaccination. My wife is taking a vaccination. And I hope everybody else out there is going to take a vaccination too. In any event, that's it for today, and I will see you in the morning. Bye.